Uh, welcome to our mid challenge boost for the Lamb Summer Reading Challenge. And so what we're gonna do tonight, I've got three incredible authors here with me that I cannot wait to introduce you to. We're about to go around and let them kind of tell you a little bit about themselves and what they write. Um, they're also going to share some tips for reading challenges. And then we're gonna close out with them kind of sharing what they're currently working on because since you guys have seen them last, um, they're all working on different projects. They may have new books out in the world, all sorts of things. So they'll share that. And then you guys can ask your questions. So, and don't let me forget, Book Swag Prize Pack will be given away tonight. So I think that's everything. Um, for anyone who isn't sure about the challenge, all you have to do is go to joyerankatory.com forward slash summer hyphen reading and everything is there on that one page you'll get links directly to the facebook stuff you'll get links to rsvp for events like this which are fabulous and you'll get all the details about the challenge itself so that's your one-stop shop for everything and now i think it's time for our authors to chat here can i ask a question absolutely so when do you want us to like introduce ourselves and then stop like is everybody going to introduce themselves and then we're going to come back and do the other things because i'm never going to remember everything i'm supposed to do in one shot <laughs> yes yes we will do that okay. we will do that so and i'll say now we're going to do you know the tip the tip or whatever it is okay. so yeah okay. i'll i'll make sure i'll make sure we're all on the same page you get everything <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Yay. Julie. That helped me out too. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told y'all I'm not going to be speaking clearly. Y'all got to help me out tonight. <laughs> you do so well. I keep going. <laughs> oh, I'm faking it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, Julie, why don't we get started with you? Okay. And I'll just go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. I am Julie Brown. Julie, I write my um, author name is Julie Mayerson Brown. I have uh, a series. I have them all right here. Uh, small town. It's women's fiction. Small town. Um, my late. Well, there's my latest. Um, and I have four books total right now. Three are in a box. Oh gosh, I'm getting all blurry. Three are in a box set, electronic version called "Welcome to Clearwater," which I have on a. I don't know what's wrong with my camera. Sorry about that. Um, and so I describe this as a Hallmark movie meets Gilmore Girls with a little more drama and uh, a little more conflict. And the uh, it's always got a romantic subplot. So they're not genre romance, but there is a little love story in every book. And so far, every book has a very lovable dog. <laughs> okay and is that that's all i should do at this point is it <laughs> yeah that's great that's perfect okay. i love okay. it and I, and I live in los angeles and i'm a mom there you go <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right so now candace will you share a little bit about yourself and your books sure my name is candace i live in mobile alabama I am a part-time bookseller, which is how I got to meet Joy. So that's definitely a perk. I get to meet other regional authors. Um, I mainly write children's literature. So I have The Existence of B. Pearl, which is YA, but is uh, often billed as a crossover. It's kind of where the crawdads, things, where the crawdads sings meets Nancy Drew. Um, it's a lot of fun to write. It's based on um, my adventuring in the swamps and everything around Alabama. My latest book is Emma's for Moon Pie. Um, ABC's in the birthplace of Mardi Gras because Mobile is the birthplace. And then I also have two other picture books out, Chomsey Chomps books, which is for dyslexic reader, for all readers. It's about dyslexic um, in character. And then Sassafras, my little squirrel with a tiny, tiny tail. Um, I am also a mom. And um, yes, yeah, so I write children's and most, all of mine have uh, southern settings, and usually um, some kind of ecological slant to it. And I'm happy to be here tonight. Meet myself. I said yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. And now, May, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm May Smith, and I write a different 
different genres. Actually, I have a co-authored book with Joy that is a nonfiction writer's book called Founders Keepers, um, a practical approach to finding key writers, critique, writing critique partners, because Joy and I are writing critique partners. That's how we know each other. <laughs> And I also have a poetry book out called Grief Like a River, and it looks, looks like it is, um, kind of. It's all you know, glary and such. But uh, that is just the journey through grief as it, as it has happened since the publication of that book. And hopefully it gives some people who are having trouble or you know finding their way in that area um, a bit of a, a solace and community with that. I'm currently writing a... Um, low fantasy romance novel that is it's got a lot of magic and um, um but it really the majority of it takes place in a small coastal town and so it's uh the little mermaid meets roman holiday so those are roman holidays one of my favorite movies ever so gregory peck is my dream <laughs> and uh, and so, so that's and by day i do i'm a director of admissions for a university so takes up, up quite a bit of time but, um, but, but love doing all the things I am a mom uh, and so I have two boys of a 10 year old and an eight year old and I live in Hattiesburg Mississippi did I cover all the bases if anybody has any questions later on you can just totally ask <laughs> that's awesome yes and I love that we're all moms we've all got kids we all we have a lot of similarities and um, wow, do y'all hear these crickets I'm gonna have to turn I'm sorry I'm gonna have to mute myself their crickets are so loud. <laughs> hey, we love crickets. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with crickets. <laughs> All right. So I guess I should introduce myself because I am kind of part of this. Um, <laughs> so I'm Joy Rankitori. Um, I live in Slida, Louisiana, and I have currently five books out. One is an anthology uh, where I have a fantasy short story in that. It's an anthology of sci-fi and fantasy books called the crux anthology it's fantastic you should totally check it out um i also have my co-written book with may as she mentioned finders keepers that's for writers and then my fiction that is currently out is um, i call it southern fiction with christian roots so i've got three books and it will be a four book collection and the fourth book is coming very very soon somebody in this room with us Terry <laughs> has read it and has been giving me some feedback. Of course, May has read it too. She got to read it a while ago, um, you know, because CPs and all that. <laughs> but they have both helped me make this way better than it would have been. And I cannot wait to get that out in the world. So that is, I think that's pretty much everything right there. And I'm a mom too. I've got two teenagers um, send chocolate and wine and <laughs> <laughs> I uh, homeschooled them. So that's a little bit about me. And now I think it's time for some tips. So let's go, let's do a different order this time. So Candace, would you mind starting us off with a tip for reading challenges? So since we're in the middle, we're in the middle of this reading challenge, I thought that would be like the perfect time to just Give a few little tips on reading challenges. Okay, I came up with two, but I wanted to just say one of them in case somebody else comes up with the other one. So I think the one that resonates the most with me is that it gives me permission to sit and read because so many times I'll be sitting there enjoying the book and I'm like, oh, there's laundry or oh, there's 10 million other things I need to do. But if I'm doing it for something, like if I'm doing this for a challenge, then I give myself permission, like, you know what, just read one more chapter, like that laundry is not going to go bad in one chapter. So that's my tip for sticking with a challenge, like let yourself read that just one more chapter. And if it goes the whole book, that's okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. So May, how about you go next? What is your tip for reading challenges? Yeah. Okay. So you're in the middle of something and you have probably potentially exhausted the way that you generally like to read books. So if you are a paper book reader, you probably been reading all of these challenges as a paper book. Um, or if you're an ebook reader, you might be always doing them as an ebook. So I encourage you to change up your format a little bit. And so if you're kind of getting into a slump, 
in the reading challenge, then maybe try an audio book or try one of the ebooks or the TV books. If whatever you're not doing, try one of those. That is a great tip. I love that. Thinking outside of the box. I got into I got into audiobooks because I, there were stories that I wanted to read and I kind of some of them I needed to read because you know I wanted to do a review or something like that to support a, an author and I fell in love with audiobooks that way because I was trying to do laundry and something else you know to get um trying to get as much bang for my buck as I could so um and now I I do my favorite way to read books now is to have a, a written copy along with the audiobook in my ears Ooh. And I, I don't know why, but it's, I just get really engrossed that way. So, That's yeah, cool. try new things. <laughs> I may need to try that actually, because you y'all may have heard me say before I don't do audiobooks. I've tried, and it hasn't worked very well. But I think if I had the book in front of me, it would actually be really good. I think so. that I'm more engrossed in it, and I tend to not wander quite as much. That makes so. sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, that reminds me of something that I learned about learning styles back when I was homeschooling. And um, the more ways you can learn something, the better you learn it. And so I think that would support what you said, May. Thank you. There's validation. <laughs> and I would say that's so interesting. Um, I'll get to my tip in a minute. But when you listen and read, what you've done is you've occupied two of your senses. So now, unless there's cookies in the oven that are baking, which would be very distracting. Um, so, so you, so you're not going to get distracted visually or audibly, aud, aud, audible, audibly. <laughs> um, and that's, I'm sure helps tremendously with your focus. Um, so, and then my tip is change up your location. I think, giving ourselves permission to read is like, it's a gift. It's a reward. And as a writer, I find that I have less and less time for pleasure reading. Cause I always say, if I'm, if I'm, um, if I'm reading, I'm not writing. And as writers, I think it's, it's challenging to really focus on good books. So I, I have a few tips I'll go through very quickly. Number one is if you pick a book up and you give it a, you know, 50 plus pages and you really don't enjoy it, I'm not sure what the rules are. Are you allowed to advance? Are you do, do a DNF, do not finish? Can you move on? Yeah. If you're really not enjoying a book, move on. Reading time is precious. You should only read something that you really love and uh, and get out of the house if you can. Farm the kids out for a little while, get grandma to come over and go to a coffee shop. I love, love, love to read in this little coffee shop near my house. I feel like I'm on like a little mini vacation. So that's, that's true. Favorite. Yes, I love that. And that is so true. Going to a coffee shop, it does feel like a little mini getaway. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. does. Sometimes I even go to my friend's house because she's got a beautiful backyard. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to pretend I'm at a hotel. And then I'm like, <laughs> Excuse me, where's the drink lady? (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Oh, I think my tip would be, and this is, I tend to get, if I do a challenge or something like that, oh, I'm sorry, that's Romy. Um, That's my dog. Anyway, y'all just ignore her. I do. (laughs) (laughs) She's a mess. I love her though. Um, but I tend to get, when I'm doing a challenge or something, I tend to get very like, oh, I have to do this. I have to do everything. I check off all the boxes. And then I put a lot of pressure on myself and the joy is gone then. So don't let it become a chore or a checklist. Um, you know, just enjoy it. And if you don't get through with all eight categories that I have and, you know, if you don't need to ask for extra categories, which I can provide, <laughs> don't worry about it. Just enjoy the books that you are able to get to um, within the categories that you're able to do. And I think that that's um, just give yourself permission to simply enjoy it. So that would be mine. <laughs> All right. So now let's go through. And I think so May is going to start us this time. So we'll go May, Julie, Candace. Um, I think I, I think that's right. And this time, tell us what you're currently working on. And it could be that what you're currently working on creatively may or may not be a writing project, and that's okay. 
So if it is, if you are in the middle of working on a new book or a new story or a new something, that's great. If it's not, if it's something related to um, your writing, that's fine too. So whatever it happens to be, just share away. Yeah. So I'm currently writing a, my, uh, it's a fiction book and I have not done fiction before. So this is new. I, well, I have written one, but no one will ever see it ever, ever, ever. So <laughs> not even joy. <laughs> yeah. We're going to change that by the way, y'all. <laughs> I'll think about it. Um, but this is a story about a girl who sees the future. She is um, living on a, an enchanted island that has been cursed it is, has been broken off from the 1890s japan and so we've got a little bit of that culture in there and she stows away on a boat and goes to a southern coastal town where she learns a, a little bit about herself a little bit about what um, relationships and friendships and things like that should be and then she has to make a very hard choice whether to stay or whether to go back and so that is what I'm writing about now. Um, oh, I did a, an interesting thing. If you're talking about like other creative stuff, I read a book. I, I reread a book because I love this book. It's um, Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover. Mm-hmm. And so I love this book. I reread it every once in a while, you know, because I just love it that much. And I listened again. It, it's a it's a multi creative book too because there's songwriting and things in there too and so she paired with an artist to make a soundtrack of it and I was listening to the soundtrack and I wasn't really thrilled with it (laughs) and uh, so I wrote a song based off of the book um my own song that I'm thrilled with (laughs) based off of that as like a bit of a little review so that was fun to do that is so fun oh my gosh I have to hear it we'll we'll get to that (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so now, Julie, you can share with us. Okay, so I am working on book five in the series. As I mentioned earlier, it's a a small town, women's fiction, and each book is a standalone and follows one main character, one female protagonist. And what I've done is with every subsequent book, I've taken a secondary character and given her her own story. So the, and, and throughout the series, there have been five best girlfriends, a a very uh, eclectic group of women. And I was, I couldn't let the series go until I gave each one of them a story. And I didn't realize this was where I was headed until I finished book four And went, wait a minute, I have to get Natalie's story in. And if any of you have read any of the books, um, she is featured in big time in book one. And then she's been the one character. She's always been there in a big way. And I'm like, wait, she needs a story. And she, this is the hardest one yet because I didn't know what I wanted to do with her or to her because we have to do all kinds of stuff to our characters to create the conflict that makes a story. So I really struggled with this one for a while. It's finally coming together uh, after I've plotted a million different things. And I think readers are going to really enjoy it. And that will wrap up this series unless I do a spinoff or something, because I've got so many projects I want to get to. uh, I wish I could go faster. So anyway, book five, hopefully we'll publish early next year, maybe the end of this year, if I get things going. That is so exciting. And as Mm -hmm. someone who has, I've read all of them. I am so excited. I cannot wait to read about Natalie's story. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joy. Awesome. All right, Candace, tell us what you're working on. So my latest project that's not writing is a bookshelf in one of our rooms. So that still have fresh paint on me. Um, but, um, I've done a a lot of poetry lately just because my head's not in a, enough of a capacity for a novel right now. And I just got three poems, um, accepted into a new publisher here in Alabama. So I'm super excited to work with them. Um, it's, uh, that has to have like nature or wildlife themes. 
and proceeds are going to wildlife parks and um, preserves and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about that. But as for the latest um, manuscript, I sent it in the beginning of the month and then my agent hasn't heard back or I haven't heard back from my agent yet. But um, it's one that I had like the best time writing because I threw in everything that I love about stories. <clears throat> and this is middle grade, so eight to 12 year old. But there is a swamp witch. There's a haunted bookstore with a haint instead of a ghost. Um, it's about connection and how everything is connected with people, with the environment. They have to go on a quest to find this orchid that's in the middle of this 300-year-old cypress called the Lord of the Delta. And there actually is a tree called Lord of the Delta out in there. So I'm trying to figure out who has the coordinates that can take me out there so I can see it with my own eyes. Um, but it's just, it's been so much fun to write. But uh, the first iteration I sent to my agent, she did not like. So she wanted me to cut one of the characters. So I had to um, rewrite it to kind of shore up that character so I could make it uh, load bearing, I guess. So that way she wouldn't be cut. So I've kind of been on pins and needles with my um, my specific email that my agent sends to when that dings. I'm like, oh, this is it. But it's not. It's not yet. That's probably why I haven't had the mental capacity to work on another project yet. <laughs> So for now, it's just poetry. Oh, I love that you were so committed to that character and you you stuck by your character. She was one that was very cathartic to write because she was so salty. And so when I took away her point of view, she just seems kind of bratty without knowing what her internal struggle was. And so that's when I was like, I can't cut her point of view. I can't just keep her as a character because she'll be misunderstood. And um, yeah, so. So Wendy has a question for you. What is the name of the journal? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's called Wild um, Hey Hey Books. And um, I can't remember where in Alabama it is. They are they're, they were doing something for the SCBWI. And that's how I found out about them. So I did some research on them. Awesome. Yay. Well, I am... I'm a little bit in between projects, but I do have some small projects going on. So uh, in August, I will be getting back to that fourth book that I mentioned, One Good Thing That'll Wrap Up Carolina's Legacy Collection, and uh, we'll be launching out on the final edits for that. So I can get that to my formatter before, um, I think, end of October is the plan for that, and it'll be out in the spring. Uh, But I also... I'm doing a little project with my fantasy stuff. I've got a lot of short stories that are currently available for free on my website um, for the fantasy series that I will be launching into after I get this collection done. And my plan is to pull together some of those short stories that are already available, kind of beef them up a little bit, um, and also pull some things that haven't been available before and put it all together into a compilation of my fantasy stuff that can be used as a giveaway um, for people to subscribe to my newsletter. So I already have the giveaway with a short story that connects with my Carolina's Legacy collection for newsletter subscribers, but I also would like to have something to offer to people who love fantasy as well to give them a, a taste of what is to come there. So that's what I'm working on right now. And... So now I would love for our readers who have joined us, do you guys have any questions for our authors? I think I'm going to just unmute here. It's a little easier. Yeah. Yay. Been, hey, Wendy. Dinner's been coming in and out, so I've been trying to pop out, but I've been listening. <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to ask Mia about her poetry because it was listed in the, uh, in the, uh, advertising and being a poet myself i i'm just curious about what you're working on it i guess you have a life story you focus on or is it just anyone's life story uh, what do you do as a poet yeah so my poetry comes from a generally a place of nonfiction, and so whether it's my truth or if it's someone else's i have to find some sort of a, either emotional truth or some sort of connection that, that i've been through in order to in order to kind of put myself in somebody else's shoes so grief like a river is is really my story as far as um, the the different types of grief grief that I've been through uh, throughout my life, and so um, 
Uh, it's split up into five different kind of circular iterations of grief and they kind of ebb and flow. And uh, and so it just kind of, even some of the raw stuff, like didn't really shy away from some of the really raw things because I felt like if I was feeling those things and they were giving me, um, if they were giving me cause to, to feel shameful or embarrassed or things like that, and there's nothing really to be embarrassed about with grief. It's just what it is, you know? And uh, at the end of the day, I went from really hating felt um, about these particular situations and how the person that I came kind of be- was becoming on the, the other end of that. And then I started to understand that, um, that grief is just another manifestation of love. And if you didn't love well, then you wouldn't grieve well. So uh, that kind of was a turning point for me to understand what was happening. And so this is, is just that journey. Uh, there are illustrations that go along with it that kind of give your brain breaks. So um, it's about a hundred page book. And so there are, I just felt like if you were going all, <laughs> if, you were, if you were a front to, front to back cover reader, then it would be a little bit too much. So I did some illustrations in there. There's some good white space as well to kind of help you breathe a little bit. But, um, but that's my particular journey through poetry. I, I write poetry all the time. I do, you know, I write songs and I, and I write poetry all the time, but generally this particular project was a heart project for me. And so I do have some other ideas for poetry books too. Um, they're not, they're not out in the world yet, but this was just one that I wanted to, to get out and share as, as soon as I could. So. So you just believe in writing a poetry collection as opposed to doing chapbooks. I, I take it you're not like full time into poetry. This is just a one. No, no. My full time job is I'm director of admissions for a university, so that takes up the majority. I work about fifty hours a week. Oh. Um, doing that. So, so that's my full time. Uh, if I could, I mean, if I could, I would love that. That would be amazing to be a full time writer. Um, and maybe one day when I'm retiring or something like that, I'll be able to. I know I don't look this old, but I have a birthday next month, and it's a big one. <laughs> but uh, but I do have, you know, I hope I hope to one day be to be able to write more often than I do. Um, I do have a poetry. Oh, oh what was I going to tell you? Da, 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 da. So poetry for me is is my most immediate outlet for trying to understand how I feel and, and what I feel. It's very cathartic. It's, a, it's an exploration into what I believe and what I think. So that's generally how all of that comes out. It's kind of, um, it's kind of, a, I, I equate it to therapy journaling. So that's how I utilize the craft. <laughs> how do you write? You, you say that you enjoy writing poetry. What do you write about? Oh, I'm a, what is known as a speculative poet. I mainly write um, astro poetry about the stars and planets. Um, but I, I do. I'm starting to branch out and do a little more literary stuff. Um, I have a I have a novel as well. But um, the last few years, I've really just embraced the poetry community, and that's where I, I mainly do um, open mics and readings and exploring my poetic side. Um, and I haven't been doing so much with prose, though I imagine we'll get back to it eventually. Well, if you're if you're wondering, did I start out to to make a collection, like a poetry collection about grief? That it was not how all that started. Um, I had I had written many many poems over a length of time, and I started to see a thread in there. And, uh, and then I was going through a particularly rough period of time as well. And I kept writing and it kept being about like this exploration into grief. And so this actually started out being a a completely different monster. And then life happened and the writing happened and the trying to understand the life happened and it became this, this creature that it is now. So, um, no, I didn't set out to write a a grief, a, a collection about grief. I didn't really set out to write a collection about anything. I just was writing and um, and then felt very passionately about um, providing a bit of a literary community for somebody who, who didn't have a community at all because I didn't have a whole bunch of people that I was able to, to group together and, and to help pull me through this. So, um, so, so very commendable. 
I'm sorry? I said it's very commendable. Oh, well, thank you. I think writing poetry is one of the hardest things that I that I do. I feel like I can write a little bit around issues with prose, and that ends up to be, you know, things can be a little bit more literary and flowery and things like that, but my poetry tends to come out pretty hard hitting. <laughs> and um, and it's, it's the most real that I think that I've ever been in life. So it's so expect if you if, if this is something that you look into, you know, expect to get a really deep dive into the psyche of May Smith. So. <laughs> poetry equals truth. <laughs> yes, poetry equals truth. And that's kind of how I deal with it, too. And Candace has shared um, the link there for the Hey Hey Books Publishing dot com in the chat. So if you're interested, you can grab that link. Um, and we're at one minute, 53 seconds here. So we're about to run out of time. So I think Julie has something to say. And then if anybody else has a question, I want to get to it if we can. Well, well, I have a question for Nancy, mm-hmm. because I suspect you're related to Terry. Okay. So honey, I wonder how old you are, if I might ask. I'm 20. You're 20. Okay. So I'm, I suspect you are the youngest here with us today. And I'm curious what kind of books, especially being, you know, coming out of YA, maybe new adult, maybe you like fiction. Mm-hmm. I wonder what kind of books you like to read. Um, A lot. <laughs> yeah. Pri- primarily, like, fantasy is um, probably my, fa- my go-to genre. I rearranged my bookshelves the other day. And I was like trying to group the different genres together. I was like, huh, I think I have a favorite. Oh, okay. um, but recently I've been reading a bit more contemporary stuff because I've just been a little burnt out on fantasy. Because um, I read one that was really good. And then everything since then in the same genre has not been as good, in my opinion. And so I'm like, gonna take a step back from fantasy and read more okay. uh, well I applaud you for being a reader because a lot of young people are missing out on the joy of reading because they they're like this all the time right <laughs> in their screen yeah so I'm about to draw really quickly so this is for our book book swag prize pack and Terry already told me that I'm not allowed to put her name in here so this is there are two names in here and it is Nancy and Wendy okay And I pulled a name and I've got no time left. Nancy. (laughs) Woo. Nancy Sweetland won our book prize pack. Thank you guys so much for being with me. I'm going to talk very quickly to say thank you. And I hope y'all will join us for the wind down, which will be July 30th and enjoy all the challenge fun between now and then. So thank you guys. Have a great night and happy reading.